What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Casey. This is my Jeep. And on this upload, we're going to be finishing off the installation of these Evo Manufacturing uh, aluminum rock skins and taillights. We left off working on this corner here that had been caved in from when I hit the taillight on a tree and pushed that corner in and I was basically pulling it out with a slide hammer and getting that corner rounded off so that we wouldn't have a big gap with these rock skins. So with that complete, now we can start the installation of these skins themselves. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this video and want to see other Jeep related, off-road related news, installation guides, reviews, and vlogs of course of me out off-roading. If you're already a subscriber, thanks so much. And don't forget to hit the like button at the end of this video if you did enjoy this upload. So once I get everything taken off, what I'm gonna do is mask off the whole area with some uh, blue or green painter's tape. During the installation process, you're gonna be pushing these on and off, moving them around, and it just will minimize any chance for scraping your paint underneath. Tools for this installation, what are you gonna need? Well, the most obvious thing is going to be a uh, nut cert tool or rib nut tool, threaded rivet, whatever you wanna call it. This one we need quarter inch 20 for the nut certs that come in the Evo installation. I picked up some fresh cutoff discs. Uh, you can use whatever tool you want for cutting out the taillight section. As I mentioned in the last video, these have uh, these corner armors have round taillights and they sit lower than the hole that is on your body already. So I'm just gonna use my Dremel with some thick cutoff discs, not those little thin wafer things that come with it. I find these do really well. I use these when I put my hood vent on. They last a bit longer. They're not really, really thin like the ones that you get from Dremel. The only other tool I think I'll need is just a drill to drill out the holes to be able to put those nut certs in. So in addition to the drill, the Dremel, uh, cutoff discs, your nut cert tool, the other thing you're gonna need is some clamps and some ratchet straps. And we're gonna use those to push these corner armors as tight to the body as we can and hold them in place while I then go and mark all of the screw, uh, all of the drill holes for the nut certs. Uh, I haven't powder coated these yet either. My experience, my experience with Evo stuff is that sometimes I do have to maybe grind off a little bit or enlarge some of the holes, I don't know. But I'm not gonna powder coat them until I've got them mounted up and sitting exactly where I want. And then I'm gonna pull them off and I'll send them off to powder coat. So we're gonna, I've got my uh, ratchet strap out. I'm gonna grab a couple clamps. I'm just gonna, just gonna put that up against the body. And from what I've seen, getting it tight along here is sort of the hardest part. So let's see how that goes. We have been working on this for a little bit. Um, I've got it lined up the best that I can. I had to use a couple clamps. I've got a C clamp here, just a little hand clamp. And the main thing holding this on is this ratchet strap. This is super, super tight here. And it's just compressing it all into the corner of the Jeep. I'm going to basically just mark off all these holes, pull it off, and I'm gonna drill them out and put those nut certs in. So what I was really trying to focus on was closing this gap as much as I can. I've closed this gap pretty good considering this was the caved in corner. And so now I'm just going to mark all these holes and we'll pull this off and drill them. And the main thing I was doing here was I was measuring this gap. So this gap for me is exactly one inch from this edge to this edge all across here. So I uh, don't have a lot of play along the bottom or I can't do too much because of the way that the Poison Spider car tire carrier limits this adjustability. So I basically just tried to make sure that this gap was uniform across the top of the uh, corner armor. So I just finished drilling some pilot holes and then I'm gonna go over this with the uh, 3 8 inch drill bit, which is the right size to be just slightly smaller than these uh, nut certs that we're gonna be putting in. You don't want to over drill the hole. It is gonna be better to go slightly smaller. And if you need to, make it a little bit larger. But if you make that hole too big, those nut certs are just gonna slip right through and they're gonna have nothing to grab onto. There we go. So I didn't upsize the drill bit. 
And this is pretty straightforward. You're just basically squeezing this together. And then you unscrew. And there you go. The nut cert is now basically just compressed both sides of the sheet metal together to hold it in place and then you can now screw to that. Quick little update, I had to take a break. Here's where it pays to have good quality tool. This thing here sucks. It is terrible. I thought it would do the job, but it is just like falling apart trying to put these rib nuts in. This was seeming a lot harder than any other rib nut that I had installed or nut certs that I installed before. So I uh, went and borrowed this tool from a friend and it is infinitely better. Um, it's able to pull the rib nuts in much tighter so they don't spin in the holes that you're putting them in. It just is much better built tool. I think uh, this one was about 80 or 90 bucks. A little bit more expensive, but the amount of time I wasted messing around with that other tool is well worth the extra little bit of money. I will put a link to the tool down in the description below. So if you guys are doing nut certs, uh, rib nuts, anything like that, check that out, grab that tool, because this one works awesome. In case you're wondering what is a rib nut or a nut cert, these are very, very popular to be installing things on sheet metal or body panels, things like that. They're, they almost look like rivets, but on the inside, they're threaded. How these work is basically you're gonna insert these into a piece of sheet metal, the body panel, and you're gonna use the tool and it's gonna squish this together and flare the rib nut. And what that's gonna do now is pinch onto the body panel and hold it in place. And so now you have a place to put a bolt that you can screw in and hold something against it. Pop it up and it has a uh, screw on piece here. You take your rib nut, you screw it on into place. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this and push it into the body panel. And when you pull these together, one, but when you pull this together, what it does is it pulls through the center, the threaded piece pulls through the center, and this tool then, when you put force on it, squishes the rib nut down so that it's holding on the piece of metal. And then when you're done, you basically just, now this is stuck in your body panel, and you take the center piece and you can just unscrew this off of your now mounted rib nut, and this stays, this guy stays in your body panel super tight. So I've got all of the rib nuts installed and this pretty much mounts up. I dry fit it once. I remarked where I'm gonna cut out for the tail light. I wanted it on the paint rather than on the tape. So I just marked that up one more time. And uh, I've just got the Dremel with one of those cutoff discs on it. And I'm just gonna quickly go around this. It cuts through the body uh, metal like butter pretty much with this thicker disc on here. So So we just finished uh, cutting out this hole and uh, I didn't realize there is a big chunk here. That's a, I don't know. I don't think that I need to cut this out with the way that those lights are gonna sit because they're very, very low profile. Uh, I'm gonna put the corner armor back on and just test fit the lights in this hole that I cut out. Just basically use the Dremel to go around it and then I have a little rotary bit that I went and just cleaned up the edges and uh, since the Dremel is a flat disc, I was able to just kind of smooth this out nicely around these edges. And obviously before final assembly, we'll hit it with a little bit of uh, paint or something to prevent some rust. So I thought that with this taillight and the harness that came with this, I wasn't going to have to do any soldering, but the connector on it does not fit the OEM connectors. I know that these wires vary depending on the year of your Jeep. So mine is a 2008 and what I've done that works is I've connected from the factory harness, the black wire to the white wire on the LED harness. And I've connected the white with yellow stripe to the red wire on the harness and the white with purple stripe to the black on the harness. And then I have clipped the two wires that would go to the reverse lights because we're not going to be using them on this. So I'm going to cap these off with a little bit of sh uh, heat shrink and I'm going to solder all three of these together and put some heat shrink over them. 
All right, we have this all nicely soldered up and heat shrank and capped off those other ends. So let's go plug this in. Uh, we managed to get this side finished up. I have two spinning nut certs in there. So when I take this off to get it powder coated, I'm gonna have to deal with those. Was able to get the tail light finally in here. This was a real problem, uh, probably because it's really cold in here. Uh, CDSJK and Trailblazers stopped by to give me a hand and they were able to help me uh, get this tail light wedged in there. I think that doing it in warmer climate, because right now it's probably two or three degrees in the garage, it's freezing cold and it's not helping with this rubber o-ring that goes around this tail light. So I'm just working on the other side now and I've got all of the nut certs mounted up but what I've decided to do around the gas cap is I'm going to actually take the the bolts that come with the kit and I'm going to use nuts behind them with some fender washers rather than nut certs because there's not a lot here right along the edge of the gas tank. Because I've got the poison spider uh, latch plate for my tire carrier here I didn't drill out the nut certs on the top and the bottom I just have one here that I'm going to use to hold in the corner armor while I put the latch plate back on. Now an issue that I have come across and I'm going to have to have a little bit of a workaround for is with this latch plate with the poison spider latch plate I've lined it up to the holes and it actually covers part of the tail light. If I do this right I can still get this tail light in here but what I'm having to do is mount I'm making a couple spacers out of some aluminum flat stock they're gonna go behind this to move it out a little bit from the corner armor and give it a little bit of room where this rubber gasket is and I think that I'm gonna be able to shove in the light and then push it in on the outside I'm not overly happy with having to have that overlap with the tail light and the tire carrier. I wish I knew that going in. I may would have maybe would have looked at the poison spider corner armors instead, but I've got them now and so it's just something I'm gonna have to deal with. Now something I didn't and totally forgot to do on the other side and I did do on this side before putting these nut strips in, but I want to mention to everybody is I did paint around the raw metal before putting all of these nut certs in. When I do final installation, I think what I may do on the other side is put a little bit of RTV around the nut certs to keep any water from getting in there. I want to prevent the rust and I painted everywhere that I trimmed as well when I did the cutout here on the tail light. So what I've done to mount this last plate on is I made a couple spacer plates out of some flat stock aluminum. I made one here, here, and here and then just bolted it down. Now my tire carrier is a little bit snug now and it's going to need a little bit of adjusting to get it uh, closing properly and I should be able to wrangle the light in here so I'm just gonna make the light harness uh, that I need and then I'm gonna put the gas cap on and just make sure that fits okay and then I'll pop the light in and that should be good we're done it took me a long time to get these installed I probably have 10 to 12 hours into these. A lot of that boiled down to that rib nut tool that I started out with. So getting a better one, having a really good rib nut tool is gonna to make a huge difference if you're installing these corner armors. I am quite happy with the corner armor itself. I think it looks really good. It installed really well. I'm not super happy that this was uh, incompatible to some degree because now it is uh, thrown off my alignment with my tire carrier. It's gonna take some wrangling to get that back if I even can. When this closes now, it is extremely tight and I have to use two hands to pull it out. And it, I've even tried adjusting it on the other side. What I'm not impressed with is these tail lights that Evo uh, sells uh, with this as uh, an add-on to the kit. They're made by truck light. I did have this uh, rubber gasket uh, O-ring rip on me during the installation. I don't know, it's pretty cold in here, so I don't think that's helping. Someone on Instagram mentioned to maybe notch this uh, connector plate here. I may think about that. Um, I may think about doing that. I do have to take all these off to get them powder coated. I just wanted to get them on, get them fit, see what modifications I had to make. Always a good thing, especially with Evo stuff. I find that it has to be tweaked a little bit during the installation, and then I'm gonna get it off to powder coat. But we're going wheeling tomorrow, so I'm gonna wheel with them on like this, 
Then I'll pull them off, throw it to week and get them powder coated. So overall, this was a really challenging installation. Make sure you have a really good rib nut tool, have some good ratchet straps to get these ratcheted down. And take note, if you're running a poison spider body mount carrier, you're gonna run into clearance issues with this light as well, how your tire carrier closes. So I'm gonna think about what I wanna do with this. Maybe I'll go with a different style of light here at the end of the day. I'm not sure, I'm gonna think about it throughout the week. If you take your time and really wrangle them on, you'll get a pretty tight seal around these corners. I know that some people have noticed they have larger gaps here in the corner, and these I've managed to minimize pretty good. That's my thoughts. It was a pretty tough install. Uh, just lots of monkeying around and adjusting and fitting and stuff like that. If you made it this far in the video, thanks so much for watching this upload. I appreciate it. Let me know what you think about these corners. If you guys have any suggestions of how I should deal with this tire carrier and this light and aligning it, leave a comment down below. I read all your guys' comments and I appreciate anything you leave down in the comment section. And if you have any questions, leave it down there as well. I read them all and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have and wanna know. Uh, with that said guys, make sure you smash that like button if you enjoyed this upload. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel. And don't forget to turn on those notifications. I really do appreciate it. And it lets you know when my new uploads go live. With that said guys, stay tuned. We got a vlog coming from off-roading because we're going tomorrow and I'll see you guys in the next upload.